Hello. These days we're celebrating the first anniversary of the Me Too movement. And many have celebrated the courage of victims, both women and men, victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment, and the courage they had to speak up, the courage to speak up in public, the courage to tell the story, in, even if there was a possibility to be criticized, to be doubt, to be radicalized, to be chastised, to be our character assassination by both pundits or internet trolls. We were touched by those stories. And those of us, I have to admit, those of us who never experienced this, I believe it's hard for us to understand why uh, some have wait not to tell their story, uh, how they really feel, uh, to form a, an informed opinion. It's very us. It, for us, it's to become ally and sometimes just to shut up and listen. What we know st uh, still, it's the dilemma between speaking up and remain silent. In many situations, I believe that all of us have experienced them. We were confronted, be, we're confronted with something that was, we felt that was wrong, that was not quite right. It was happening in front of us. And we ask ourselves, what should we do? Let it go? Speak up? What would be the consequence of not speaking? What would be the consequence of speaking? We felt that. And the book of Esther in the First Testament is a good example of this kind of feeling, this kind of situation. Esther is a little orphan girl through, who, through a series of circumstances, become the wife of the mighty and powerful king of Persia. And of course, a real identity was concealed because this kind of union would not be acceptable. And one day Esther discovered that her whole people will be exterminated through the an edict of the king of Persia, through the grand vizier Ammon. And she faced that situation. What should she do? What should I do, she wondered. Speak up and putting herself in jeopardy? to be killed with the rest of our people, or have this instinct of survival we all have and save our skin and remain silent. And this is a terrible dilemma. Pondering sometimes, what could I gain? What could I lose? Like I said, in both situations, what is right? What is wrong? And for all of us, that are facing those dilemma, those painful situations. Often what we have to guide us in our discernment is our faith, our beliefs, what we are called to do. Because sometimes we don't have the luxury to play it safe, to believe that it's not our problems, it's theirs or simply pretend it does not exist and live in denial. Sometimes our faith, our beliefs, our spirituality pushed us to act, even if it's uncomfortable, unpleasant, unpopular, unsafe sometimes. We are called to think not just about us, our little self, but to look at the big picture. What does it mean for humanity? Maybe I will gain nothing it's in, intrinsically, but other human beings will gain by it. Might be the person next door, my children, my grandchildren. These are the dilemma that we are facing constantly. Some are very painful. Some are a little less. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we're called to act. 
We are called to listen to those who have stories to share. We are called to be courageous and bold. We are called to believe that God invites us to speak truth and will support and sustain us during those challenging moments. And I hope that you will experience this call. I hope you will speak up. I hope you will listen when others will speak up. I hope you will be courageous. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for being there. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. And until next time, bye-bye.